We've come to the beautiful Ilan Valley in Wales to meet up with our own web guru, Daniel Raylian. Like many people, he's managed to complete his project in a far less glacial pace than our own. And what a project it is. This is his BMW M50 powered Toyota Celica. I like to mess around with things. That's that's what I do. I mess around with things. And the more I mess around, the more I find out. I grew up in Romania in the 90s, immediately after the communism finished. All you would see is old sort of Soviet vehicles, old Romanian dachias, and I always thought there's more. And then eventually the modern cars came in from Europe and you had Opals, BMWs, Mercedes, cars that we didn't see as children. They sort of became the thing. I was about 12 when my brother bought a Toyota Celica like this one. And that's when I sort of started discovering Japanese cars. And yeah, then the internet came. And that was the end of that. My first car, I was in Germany, I was 18. It was a Nissan 100NX. I love that car. I like every single car I ever owned. Um, eventually I came to the UK. My first car in the UK was a Citroen AX. You name it, I probably had it if it was sort of a run-of-the-mill car. I always wanted one of these since my brother had one when I was a kid. Um, that car was always supposed to be inherited and become mine when I, when I was of the right age. Uh, unfortunately it died found one on eBay many years later. I was in the UK. Uh, it was in Derby. It was on a 99p eBay auction and it was listed on a Sunday morning at about half past eight. Uh, 11 o'clock I was already in Derby. Um, I called the guy and I, we set it up and I went down to see it and he just wouldn't budge on uh, leaving, letting the auction run. Um, so at that point I sort of, I had 750 quid in my bank account and that was it. Um, and I just said, look, this is all I have. Um, this is all my money, take it. Rusty, um, rusty, rusty, just rusty. Anything from the orange stripes down was rotten, it was gone. Floors, doors, wings, the battery fell out of it through the inner wing, it was that rotten. A year down the line, the car was still in here, covered up. Um, we took some bits off it to try and sort of fix it, um, but the more we took off, the worse it got. Eventually, we sort of got to the complete disassembly and there was probably a handful of bolts that didn't snap when we took them off, so everything was just completely gone. Before we stripped it down, we actually got it running. Uh, we drove it 50 yards to the first posty van and um, a rod came through the side of the block and that was the end of that. It was one of those, you look at it and you go, Scrap. We just sort of kept doing work on it, not really having a plan. And eventually we found that BMWs are cheap. So we bought a BMW and we took parts of it. And then we bought another BMW, we took more parts of that. Um, and eventually, after about four BMWs, we got all the parts we needed to put the car together. The BMW engine is out of an E46, um, specifically a 323i, so the age of the engine is 2001. Um, the rear end is out of a 2011. Fun fact, the steering column is out of a Renault Clio. Once we got the engine in, we realised that we had to cut a lot of the tunnel out. When you're sat in the vehicle, you, you, your legs are slightly offset to the right, um, simply because we had to make so much space for the BMW gearbox. It's a drift car clutch changes are going to be the name of the game so I didn't want to make my life difficult so I allowed myself enough space to get my arms up around it and get to all the bell housing bolts and not struggle with it. The thing is it is a car that isn't built by a mechanic 
Um, it's inspired by YouTube, it's inspired by images I've seen on the internet, images I've seen as a kid, magazines, you name it. I'm subscribed to 290 something YouTube channels of all to do with automotive stuff from Bad Obsession, watching Binky from the beginning, um, Mighty Car Mods, all the, all the big channels. And for example, when Nick tried to fit that Toyota engine into the, in the, in the Mini, it wasn't going to happen. Just, you can't just throw it in. But the way I looked at the video and I was like, right, so he fitted in and he didn't leave that much space there. So I thought, okay, well, we can do that as well because we don't need that space. If he doesn't need it, we don't need it. The biggest struggles were getting the bodywork right. We had to enclose half this unit with transparent plastic pieces that the butchers use and set that up in here. My mate came over who was going to help me and show me how to paint. And uh, he looked at it and he was like, no. After six months of sanding by hand with a DA, you name it, everything was wrong. Um, believe it or not, this was supposed to look like a Mad Max car because I knew bodywork wasn't going to be its strong suit. So I was quite happy with just rattle canning it black and that was it. Um, Ryan was not having any of that. He just thought, right, we're doing this and we're doing this right. I laid the primer down and then we spent a few more weeks getting it just right, sanding it, wet flatting it. Then he came to the lacquer and he came in and he started explaining to me about how I have to do the lacquer. You have to start here, you have to finish here. You've got this cut line here and you can't let it go dry and you don't want to do this and you, you've got to rush around the car and then end up on top. And he just completely bamboozled me. So he came in, looked at me, yanked the gun out of my hand and he just laid the lacquer down. I just couldn't comprehend everything he told me. Within five seconds, he blew my brain. Then we all laughed about it. The panels were still in primer, the car was painted, uh, I was working under the bonnet doing wiring and somebody leaned against my wing and my fiberglass over fender popped off the metal. So I literally ran to Ryan's paint booth with the wing in my hand and I was like, this happened. That's where we pressed pause on the painting because I, I didn't want cracks on a car that I just finished building. Um, and he said that there's no way to stop it. And I thought, there's gotta be a way to stop it. A few months later, I, uh, I was on Facebook and somebody did something called carbon skinning. So then I started researching and started looking at what people do and it takes a very long time. Then I've seen James Dean's um, drift car, which is completely made of carbon Kevlar. And I thought, Oof, that looks nice. It looks so much nicer than carbon. I bought a humongous roll of carbon Kevlar. I think I bought about 30 litres of epoxy all in because they came in kits of five litres. Um, that was nowhere near enough. Every panel took about a week to make. Carbon Kevlar every single panel. It was a lot of epoxy and it's, uh, it didn't smell, but everything was sticky. I've got a brush with, that was dried in the bottom of a cup and there's yeah. black epoxy in it. And <laughs> took the brush out with that epoxy out and it just stands up like a thing. People were confused by what I was trying to achieve. I mean, it was a huge project. It's the sort of thing that people with money do and I was doing it in a computer shop. I don't even have a ramp. So I said to everybody, you help me, I put your name on the car. And it's, it was as simple as that. Anybody who helped, no matter how little or how much, their name went on the car. I usually drive with a valve closed. Um, it's just, it's too loud. But if you want it to be loud, you just press a button and it becomes very loud. on the front based on what I know it has a dragon so the dragon is supposed to represent the Celica. There was a lot of versions of that spoiler. I started looking at the RWB Porsches, um, the ones built in Japan and I really liked the shape of that. Found a random spoiler on Facebook for sale for £15. It was completely broken and cracked um, but I fixed it with super glue epoxied everything together funny enough another name on the car mad engineering i was trying to explain to him what i wanted with these spoiler arms and how they have to go up and twist and then become flat again i used hairspray on cardboard to make the cardboard sit in a certain shape the way it had to do 
um, and then took it back to him and um, he eventually cut a flat piece of aluminium out and then we bent it with a fly press and just made it look sit just the way it's meant to do on the car. I was looking for a set of extreme offset wheels for a long time. They're steel. Uh, a lot of people laugh at me, oh, drift car with steel wheels, they're very heavy. They are very heavy, but they do look really good. So it's a car built around wheels. I, I wanted the original headlights back in the car. I wanted the original grill. The way we mounted the headlights is something I've seen done in Japan. It's something I really like the look of. Um, and again, it's just another small piece of inspiration for the car. Absolutely everything that came off this car has not been scrapped, has been sold to an enthusiast from Ireland. Um, he literally sent a lorry down here with full pallets. We palleted everything up, shipped it off. We recycled everything. The, the bonnet was just completely bent on the top. You could see all the reinforcement under the bonnet by looking at the outside. I went on Google and I searched for bonnet vents and we found this one. It was cheap and it was just fiberglass, um, but it was humongous. We cut it in half and it still covers 90% of the bonnet. And we just basically fiberglassed it on. I got worried that it's gonna split off. Then a carbon Kevlar wrapped it and now it's not gonna fall off. When we started stripping it down, we took all the glass out. Um, believe it or not, we lost a windscreen um, in a very small unit. Um, it just vanished. We could never find it. A few years down the line, Mike, Templar Performance, he called me up to say that he's had a line about somebody who's ordered two heated windscreens from Pilkington for a car like mine, um, but never picked them up. And they've been sat on the shelf for about three years. Do I want one? And I was like, yes, I do. Um, so that's how I ended up with a brand new um, custom made heated windscreen for a 40-year-old Toyota. I couldn't refit the original column switches. Eventually I found uh, a company called Racing Circuits and they custom make these uh, little plates. It worked really great until I connected the wipers and uh, it was my mistake. I didn't earth the wiper motor properly. Everything that that box was controlling, it turned them on. So your engine was starting, your hazards were flashing, your lights were flashing. So everything got turned on, um, which again, quick call, racing circuits, talk to the guy for two minutes. He said, just check your earths. And it was as simple as just not rubbing the paint off. The first time we started it, uh, I wasn't expecting it to run. Everything got checked six times before we actually started the car. And um, it was just me and a friend of mine in the unit. I wasn't expecting it to start. The OBD port wasn't working, so I couldn't communicate with the car. I couldn't see what's going on. Um, press the button and it started. Well, I didn't press the button. I shorted two wires and it started. That, that was... That was an achievement, so um, immediately I grabbed the throttle cable which was just laying on the floor and I yanked it and I just redlined it with no exhaust in the unit with all the doors closed and nearly popped everybody's um, ear. ear. That, that, that was probably two years before I first drove it. Um, the prop shaft on this car was another very long story. Uh, it's made by a company in Kidderminster. And the same day I picked that prop shaft up, I brought it down here, um, fitted it straight away, and went out for a quick drive through the yard on private land. That was that was amazing. Um, it had no brakes. Nothing really worked. The steering wheel wasn't really attached. The gear, the gear linkage fell out as soon as I fell out, as soon as I drove out of the unit because it wasn't attached. It was just hanging there. So I put it in first, got out of the unit, and couldn't get it out of first. By the time I got to the gate to try and turn around, the clutch no longer worked. So I was kind of stuck with no brakes, no clutch. So I just turned the engine off. Um, then I had to do the walk of shame back to the unit, get a jack walk all the way back to the gate, jack the car up, take it out of gear because I had no gear linkage, and then I pushed it back. Two days before uh, my MOT was booked, I was trying to clear it up, whether I needed fog lights, whether I needed windscreen washers, what I actually needed function. He mentioned windscreen washers. 
and my brain instantly went, you don't have a windscreen washing tank. Immediately, I hung up. Uh, I made a quick sketch of a small tank that was about one and a half to two litres, and I sent it to BB Motorsport, and I was like, I need this tomorrow, because the MOT is tomorrow. Um, they just looked at it, and they just couldn't believe the crappy sketch I gave them. Uh, amazingly, they actually made it happen. I went and picked it up the next day, fitted it, put a tiny little universal pump on it, and it works. And it's been working since. It's still held on by zip ties, because I didn't even have time to drill that out. But it was there for the MOT, it still works, and everybody was happy. I drive this car pretty much every day. Um, rain or shine, it doesn't care. Um, wipers work, heaters work, lights work. You just take it everywhere. Customers love it. Everywhere you turn up in it, people just love to talk about it. I always wanted underglow. Ever since I've seen the first Fast and Furious. And that's, that was the identifier. And I always wanted, always, always wanted neons ever since I've seen that. And they've been in and out of fashion so many times since. I didn't care about what the fashion is. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure the car quite clearly explains it. I don't care what's in and what's out. I wanted neons. I bought neons. I fitted neons. Some people love them. Some people hate them. I love them. Certain people see cars as driving from A to B. It was never about driving from A to B for me, it's just how you get there. I don't have the right words to explain how it feels. It's... It's just cool.